Hello and welcome to another budget build. Obviously we're doing a Briggs flathead this time. Same deal as before, we're trying to get the most bang for the buck and the goal is, you know, have it ready for a mini bike or a go-kart or whatever. And same as the other videos, we're gonna to try to stick to a $100 budget. The engine itself, there's parts we can use, parts we can't. The tank is shot. The carb is probably savable, so I'll probably put, keep that in the air filter assembly and just keep them for spares. The engine itself is a 1980, so it still has the pull choke, whereas like I think 83 and above, they had a lever choke. It does have a regular electronic ignition. I would have converted it if it was points, but in this case, we don't even have to deal with that. To summarize real quick, this engine came off of a tiller. The intake valve was stuck when I got it. What I had to do is I pulled the plug and I just tapped the valve back down and it popped back into place. This has dual outputs. I'm gonna call this a PTO for the sake of simplicity. I don't know what the actual term is, but we don't need the cam driven pulley. So we're just gonna cut the external portion off. The right way would be to buy a non-PTO cam and a non-PTO side cover, but then we've blown the budget already. So just gonna lop it off and then work with what we got. This is a three quarter inch output shaft, so very common to find clutches for. There was water in this case when I got it because the little rubber boot on the PCD system, whatever you wanna call it down here, was trashed, so it was letting water in that way. I flushed it out a couple times already. I'll probably just do one more flush once it's fully set up, just to ensure that like at least a majority of the contaminants are out. This filter is actually not trash. I was expecting it to be just like dust where it falls all apart, but it looks like it was actually oiled throughout its life. It's actually not bad. We're not using it, but it's not bad. For whatever reason, the hardware for the carb is mismatched, which doesn't surprise me for 40 years worth of someone who was just making do with what they had. I am not hopeful that these exhaust studs are gonna break free and not break off in the head. They only want me to find out, so let's just get at it. That one feels okay, so let's try this one. Nope, that one just broke. Yeah, great. Oh good, well it broke in a way that I might still be able to get it out. I just looked in this exhaust. That's not great. We'll figure that out later. Oh shit, why is it so tight? Stuff. Yep, that's not coming off. Great. No. Free dirt. Oh, it did have points. Someone's already converted it because they just left the wires back here. Oh, I forgot to mention it. There used to be a neck here that the cap would used to thread onto, and it's so rotten that that is gone. And you can't buy new necks to braze on there, so it's just impossible to seal it. And it just stinks of varnish and rust. Come on, get on. I'm not asking much. Just vacate yourself from the thing. There you go. See? Difficult. Oh. Huh. Well, that's disgusting. So normally, main pickup is here, secondary pickup is here, and there's normally a cup that like holds fuel so it starts easier. The, the secondary cup is entirely gone. And you can also see like how bad the tank is. It's horrific. I really don't want to dump this out because it's gonna make everything smell, but that's what's left of the secondary cup, just kind of. I'm just throwing this away immediately. It stinks so bad. This tube here is the one that was in that, supposed to be in the cup there. And this one's the main one, which is also just rotted away. So, perfect all the way around. The easiest way to buy a coil that's electronic ignition. So I just buy them in bulk, which the part numbers, you're not gonna be able to read it, but it's 398593 or 496914. Basically you just look up five horse Briggs coil. And the way you can tell if it's points or electronic pickup right here, there's a secondary little like tang. That wasn't a great explanation, but you kind of get the point. God, I regret dumping all this dirt here because now it's stinking up the place. I'm gonna go and do a compression test. And the only reason I'm 
curious to see what it will do is I know for a fact the person that owned this passed away in like early 2000s and this stuff's been sitting since. You're not gonna be able to see it, but we're gonna want it to be like up here-ish, in like the 100 PSI range. It's like 60 PSI. Okay, let's try with a little marble and just see if we can uh, coax it to do a little bit better. And if it goes up now, it would tell us it's rings. If it doesn't go up, then we'd have a valve issue, which being that the intake valve was stuck open, I'm thinking corrosion built up on the seat and as such doesn't seal well any longer. Seventy-five, eighty. So really not too much better. 90 is really kind of the minimum for running. Not the end of the world. Again, it's been sitting for 20 something years. Wow, that took nothing to remove. That's not bad at all. I feel like this has been serviced. Like that gasket, they're normally like that compressed graphite. And this is like a more modern one. Um, there's a ton of stuff in the cylinder though. Like, like look at these flakes and stuff in here. Yeah, it's got lateral scoring or vertical scoring. I don't know, Not it's not super great, but really not the end of the world. So we're gonna clean it all up. These valves look like trash though. So I'm guessing the lapping. Yeah, the exhaust one looks not good. So plan of attack is, firstly, clean everything thoroughly. Secondly, I'm gonna flatten the head to get rid of this lip and thus kind of bump the compression a little bit. I'm gonna pull this breather off, like right now, actually. We're gonna do both a new head gasket and a new um, breather valve, gasket, whatever. This line, is, this elbow is just gonna just hang out, I guess now. Once I have everything where I want it, we're gonna start fixing things. Like I'll try to get the stud out. I'm gonna chase all the threads for everything. And then we can start building up from there. If I end up going with a thread and exhaust, I could literally just not do anything about that stud. That's to be determined because this is, I don't wanna leave it that way, but it also may become a total nightmare and not come out of there. So we have options for the exhaust. This side cover was revealed all sorts of crap in here. There's not supposed to be that much material just hanging out in here. So yeah, you can see it's like, it's really bad. Okay, I've done a lot of cleaning so far. It's getting there, not exactly where I want it, but it'll do. Got all the mating surfaces cleaned up for the new gaskets, got the piston cleaned up, got the bore cleaned up, got the dirt out of the bore and rings. I lapped one of the valves so far just to show you the difference. And now we're gonna do the exhaust port and then we can slap this back together. If you look at the intake side, there's a nice clean mating surface right there and also a very clear band of new mating surface on the valve itself. Whereas if you look on the exhaust valve, there's no clear sealing surface anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some lapping compounds on the seat itself or the valve, it doesn't really matter, drop it in and then spin it around a bunch with this little suction cup thing. So really nothing to it. It's easy, you just keep going until you're happy with the end result. This on here. This is basically just like a graphite paste. It's more coarse than that, but like it's just literally just gritty lubricant. Okay, and then just and then just go back and forth. You want to rotate back and forth, not the same direction the whole time. Both will probably work, but the method that is proven is go back and forth in both directions, and also pick up the valve occasionally and move it. That way, you get a consistent mating surface the whole way around, regardless of where the valve is placed. Okay, that looks pretty good. So yeah, we have a nice band of new mating surface. Same with the valve seat. So those should seal pretty well. Anything's better than what it was. I got these out using a different tool than this one. I used just a standard style valve compression tool, but same sort of thing. You just kind of clamp this in there, squish the spring enough that you can slip everything together, which includes the spring retainer. And what happens here is the spring retainer sits at the bottom and has a hole in it that indexes 
into a notch in the valve itself. And the outer hole is obviously larger and that's where you start. And once it's over the valve, you push this clip over and then lock into place and also drop on the floor. You lock into place and that holds everything together and then you can release the compression tool. This should be it, so let's see. Okay, while they're valving, oh, out. So we can put the breather on now. This breather's had much better days. But in any case, we're gonna throw it on there anyway. Part number is 27549S. And that goes there. And then we use some crummy ass hardware. Also, I forgot to mention the exhaust stud here didn't come out. I just ended up breaking it more. I could drill and tap it, but we're doing this on a budget and time this is part of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a thread in style exhaust. This is three quarter NPT. So that's what I bought and that's what we're gonna run with. Even though the rest of the tank and stuff that would use this is not gonna be here anymore, I still would like this to route this down like I did on that other engine for the budget mini bike route this down in a way, that way it just doesn't spray oily air all over everything. Another part that I added but didn't talk about was a magnetic drain plug, which these are 23-9965. They are in fact valving. I don't know what that noise is, the rod knock. Oh, sounds like it. I'm gonna pretend it in here. Another thing I forgot to mention, I wired up a kill switch. Well, at least a, a wire to kill it. Because again, the kill switch was previously on the governor side. So we're not using that. And I don't want to open this thing up a second time just to wire it. So just getting it out of the way now. Okay, gonna go ahead and get the head gasket on now. So that just goes there. It's part number 272157S. We went ahead and cleaned the mating surface of the block itself and the head, and I took extra material off the head just to kind of bump compression just a little bit. And then, depending on who you ask on the internet, head bolts need to be between 140 and 165 inch pounds. I know I said I was gonna do it, but I also didn't follow up to tell you it's actually done, because I chased all of the threads, including the head bolts. I did a lot of guessing with the intake. I really wanted to use a round side Makuni style carb and I had lots of intakes to pick from, but they were all just far enough off that I couldn't make it work easily, especially for something that's like, this is supposed to be a budget build, not do a bunch of bespoke machining build. So we ended up using this intake again, which this is actually the same one that I used on the three and a half horse Briggs that was on the budget mini bike build, the little red Fox one from long ago. At the time, I didn't know what the part number was for this because I found it on a junk engine at a junkyard. And there's numbers on it, but they don't correlate to anything. But I did, however, find the real part number after a lot of searching, which is 28416A. It's actually a Tecumseh intake, but it's direct bolt on and requires no finagling. And you can mount it with the carb up or down below, depending on your setup. We're gonna have the exhaust just kind of out. So I'm gonna put it up in a way didn't have another gasket for this guy, so I just reused the old one and just sanded it flat to get rid of any imperfections and also hope it just seals again. And with this, we're just using a standard mower style carb, which has a manual choke and also adjustments for mixtures. The air filter setup is just one you would have gotten off of a Craftsman mower from like the early 2000s. Very easy to find used. However, I don't have a used one, so I had to buy them new, which meant buying each part individually and then that comes with price markups for each. So more than I want to spend, but it's all new, it works. It attaches right to the car, it's perfect. The exhaust itself, since I wasn't able to get that exhaust stud out, we have to go with a thread-in style exhaust, which is just three quarter inch NPT. So I got a six inch section there, a 45 degree coupler, and then a three quarter inch muffler from a tractor or something. And you can just buy those at any real hardware store. I 
want to use for the death cart after all. Engine stand. I didn't realize the cart was rolling away. Let's go ahead and chalk that so it stops doing that. Oh, it vibrated rust off the back too. <laughs> I don't even know where that rust came from actually. getting there. Now that the engine is scolding hot, let's go ahead and burn ourselves on it. We're gonna drain the oil out. It should be a gray color. The friction modifier I use is a gray metallic. So if you don't know it's in there, it looks really bad. We'll see what happens. This is the magnetic drain plug as well, so we'll see what's on it. Okay, well, it's the color it should be. And then there is some crud on the drain plug. Really not too, not too bad. Kind of what I expect for something that hasn't been awake in decades. Okay, so the engine's at the temperature now. Throttle's wide open, choke is off. So no restrictions airflow wise. And the oil's changed, so that doesn't really change anything. But we'll see what it does compression wise. If it had stuck rings, the compression should be higher. If my compression tester is bad, it should read basically about the same, which was like 60, 65 pounds. It was running, so I don't think it's actually 60 pounds. So I think 80 or 90 is the minimum. That's still reading like 80. So, okay, I'm rolling bad compression tester. All right, I think it's a pretty good place to wrap up for this Mod 101 episode. This is, I think, actually the cheapest one so far. We are at $84 and some change into this engine. I did get the engine for free, but I have gotten three of them over the past like year, and the only one I actually paid for was $13. See, so yeah, I think we kind of met the expectation of this whole series, which is build an engine cheaper than you can buy a Predator for. I honestly don't even know what Predators cost, but in any case, I would much rather build something. So in this case, let's say you paid $20 for the engine. So you're at 104 for this total build. If I left out any part numbers or misspoke on part numbers, feel free to let me know. And also if you have any ideas or recommendations on engines to do this sort of build on, feel free to let me know as well. Because again, I have one more in queue, but other than that, I'm not really sure. And with all that being said, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Three eighths, drop it on the floor instead. Why did someone tighten this so fucking much? Holy shit, why? Really, what the fuck? So you can kind of see this. This is the one, this is the tube that normally sits in. Okay, just focus there, that's fine. Okay, now we wait for the dogs to stop barking. Oh shit. And broken camera. I think it's got more compression. How did I lose something with like three things on the bench? There it is, okay, great. So, 